Black Eyed Susan by Douglas Gerald, a version for the New Model Theatre by Robert Polder, Act One. to preach. Here is a milestone. I'll leave you in its company. Aye, it's all very well, but you have broken poor Susan's heart. And as for William... What of him? The shark's of him for what you care. Didn't you make him turn sailor and leave his young wife, the little delicate black-eyed Susan, that pretty piece of soft-speaking womanhood, your niece? Now, say you haven't qualms. On a winter's night now, when the snow is drifting at your door, what do you do? Shut it! Will you go on with your catechism? No, I'd rather go and talk to the echoes. A fair day to you, Mr. Doggrass. If your conscience... Conscience! Oh, my conscience sleeps well enough. Sleeps? <laughs> Don't wake it, it might alarm you. One word with you. No more of your advice. I go about like a surly bull and you a gadfly buzzing around me. From this moment threw off the part of counsellor. I have given you warning. Take heed, take heed. And with this counsel, I give you good day. Aye, it's the only good thing you can give. And that only good because it's not your own. The rascal has no more heart than a bagpipe. One could sooner make Dover Cliffs dance a reel to a penny whistle than move him with words of pity or distress. Ah, no matter. Let the old dog bark. His teeth will not last forever. And I yet hope to see the day when poor black-eyed Susan and the jovial sailor William may defy the surly cur that has divided them. Ah, get off. What do you know? I know that Mrs. Susan, Dog Grass's niece, has two black eyes. <laughs> Your knowledge proves that, though a fool, you are not blind. Several words, Mr. Ratchet. What? Be you as dumb as the figure of the Stalin. Let my little finger be your elm and see you answer it. Who am I? Tom Hatchet, the smuggler of deal. Captain of the Red Breast, and trading partner with old Doggrass, Chanky. Now I'll tell you who you are. Bill Raker, first mate of the Red Breast, as great a rogue as ever died at the foreyard, and consequently the best person to go on your errands. Just so. See you doing well. Now bear up, whilst I pour a broadside of intelligence into you. I'm going to be married. You generally are at every port you put into. Belay your jokes. To whom do you think? You can't guess? No. It isn't to the last port admiral's widow. Perhaps to Big Betsy the Bumbo woman. No, you albatross. 
to Susan, the black-eyed Susan. Steady there, steady. I'm no younker. The lassie's married already. Aye, she had a husband. What? Well, I know. How blows the wind now? What do you stare at? He's dead. Oh, poor lad, poor lad. Have us there with your salt water. William is not dead. What think you now? That there is one more brave fellow in the world and one more liar. Ha! 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 You marry Susan? Now belay, belay the joke. Listen to my story. It shall be short, short as a marlin spike. I must marry Susan. She knows not you. You must swear that you were her husband's shipmate, that you saw him drown. Is it not a good scheme? Had the devil been purser, he could not have made a better one. I'm now going to old Doggrass to see further about it. Meantime, you do think of the part you are to act, and I'll think how I can best reward you. The boatswain gave the dreadful word. The sails their swelling bosom spread. No longer must she stay aboard. They kissed, she sighed, he hung his head. A lessening boat, unwilling rose to land. Adieu, she cries, adieu, she cries, and waves her lily hand. Ah, there she is like a caged nightingale singing her heart out of her prison bars. For this cottage is little better than a jail to her. Twelve long tedious months have passed, and no tyrants of William. Shame upon the unkind hearts that parted us, that sent my dear husband to dare the perils of the ocean and made me a pine and miserable creature. Nut brain, have you seen my uncle? Oh, yes. Will he show any kindness? <laughs> I cannot tell. Did you ever see gooseberries grow upon a cabbage stump? You threatened to distress the good dame. Aye, for the rent. Oh, Susan, I would I were your landlord. Ah, but I'm nobody but a half gardener, half waterman, a kind of alligator. That gets his breakfast from the shore and his dinner from the sea. Oh, be gone. I see Mr. Doggrass. If he finds you here, he must not. Here's a cupboard. I'm afraid there's plenty of room in it. No, 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 no. I would not for the world. There's no occasion. Meet him, meet him. No, no, not I. For quiet's sake. We never meet, but like fire and gunpowder, there is an explosion. This'll do. Now, Susan, you know my business. I say, you know my business. I come for money. I have none, sir. A pretty answer, truly. Are people to let their houses to beggars? Beggars, sir? I'm your brother's orphan child. I'm sorry for it. I wish he was alive to pay for you. <laughs> and where's your husband? Do you ask where he is? I'm poor, sir. Poor and unprotected. Do not insult me. <laughs> Aye, this it is to let houses to women. Let a man ask for his rent, and you pull out your pocket handkerchief. Where's Dame Attlee? And the next room. Ill, very ill. An excuse to avoid me. She shall not. You will not enter. Who will stop me? If heaven give me power, I... Uncle, the old woman is sick. I fear dangerously. Her spirit weakened by the late misfortune. 
Can they matly pay the money? No. Then she shall the prison. She will die there. Well, would you make the old woman close her eyes in jail? I have no time to hear sentiment. Mrs. Attlee has no money. You have none. Well, though she doesn't merit lenity of me, I will not be harsh with her. I thought you would not. <laughs> I'll take whatever may be in the house. So, Mr. Dugrass, this is how you behave to unfortunate folks, coming and selling them up and turning them out. Is this your feeling for the poor? Feeling? I pay the rates. What business have you here? Go to your spinning. I always thought you were very ugly, but now you look hideous. Peace, darling, peace. Oh, you're too quiet, too gentle, Susan. I wish my dear neck brain was here. Oh, Susan, I wish he was here. He's one of the best, most constant of lovers. He'd befriend you for my sake. Jacob! You know your business. What, what, what are you, master? What, an old dame at Liz? Jacob, do your duty. Now begin. Put down everything you see in the cottage. Well, here goes. Um, I'll first begin with the cupboard. Oh, no, 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 no. And then come this way, come this way. Why not the cupboard? I suspect. Oh, yeah. And now so do I. Oh, it's fast. I'll have it open. I'll have it open. And I'll put the first thing down. No, I'll put the first thing down. Nap brain. Oh, Susan, Susan. No, -ho! pretty flower. How it hangs its head. Go on with your duty, Jacob. Put down everything in the house. Do, Jacob, and begin with one broken head, then with one stony-hearted landlord, one young woman innocent, Ditto jealous, one man tolerably honest, and one somewhat damaged. I'll have you up before the justices. You've broken my crown. Well, Susan, it is sometimes convenient, is it not, for a husband to be at sea? Sir, scorn has no word, contempt no voice to speak my loathing of your insinuations. Take, sir, all that is here, satisfy your avarice, but dare not indulge your malice at the cost of one who has now nothing left in her misery but the sweet consciousness of virtue. Huh. The way with all women when they are found out, is it not, Mrs. Dolly? I can't tell, sir. I never was found out. <laughs> You're lucky, then. Yes, we don't mean often. But as for you, Mr. Natbrain, I wish I could remember what Susan said about virtue. It would apply to my case admirably. Jacob, do you stay here? See that nothing of the least value leaves the house. <laughs> In that case, Jacob, you may let your master go out. Someday, my friend. I shall be a match for you. <laughs> Dear Dolly, watch this. Um, um, oh, well done. Excellent. There's all the neighbours getting the furniture out of the garden window. What, what, what? Is there? It's against the law. And I'm His Majesty's officer. And I'll be among them in a minute. <laughs> a bailiff, like a snowstorm, is always best on the outside. Now, Dolly, sweet Dolly Mayflower, don't talk to me. The cupboard, sir. The cupboard. <laughs>
Act One continued, The Smuggler's Cave. Is well. It is but a lie, hey, but such a one. No, I'm determined not to join such a plot, yet I'll seem to do so too. Oh, Mount's here. Who the? A friend. Ma foi, this place is the véritable enfer. Uh, uh, it is the diable. Yes, you're not so used to it, are you? It isn't so pleasant as Paris, I dare say. Well, you have paid us decently for the job. Still, I don't think it altogether right that having been taken fighting against us, we should aid in your escape. Cool. But the captain says so ever. What's that about the captain? Only talking a bit with the mounds here. Well, Frenchman, about midnight, the craft gets underway, and tomorrow you may sup in France. Uh, avec beaucoup de plaisir, uh, uh, ce sera bien agréable. <sighs> Are all the gang here, I wonder? Hello, what's that? Why the mounseer is speaking English. English, poor fellow, not he. He hasn't sense enough like you or me. A prize! A prize! Where? At the mouth of the creek. It's the excise cutter's boat. Her crew are somewhere about. Hey, let's first scuttle the craft and then... Villains! Ah, treachery! You're no Frenchman. Here, down with him! Down with him! <laughs> Fifty to one? Nay, then. Let's make a boat of it. Skylark's crew, ahoy! <laughs> Come on, Ranger! You told us to we vacated this cavern. Black-Eyed Susan, Act Two. Thank you. 
bizarre, my noble fellows. My heart jumps like a dolphin. I feel as if I were driving before the gale of pleasure for the aim of joy. Here, but I say, William, there's nobody here to meet us. Why, no. That is, you see, because we dropped anchor afore the poor things had turned out of their hammocks. Hello? What craft is this? Cutter ahoy? Hey, what ship? <laughs> My name's Jacob Tweed. What service? I'm in the law. Yeah. Belongs to the rocket boats, eh? These be Ozy Bub ships, lads. The law. Oh, forget him. Well, here, look at this. Here comes a fleet. Aye, and as smart as the 74 on the king's birthday. Oh, yeah, look too bad. A little more to port, Miss May. A little more to port. Here, there's my Susan. No papal lands for a royal salute. There she is, schooner rigged. Oh, what's the matter? It isn't she. It isn't my crap. <laughs> left alone on the doctor's list while all the crew are engaging? Oh, I feel as if half of me was wintering in the Baltic and the other half stationed at Jamaica. Oh, it's no use. I must ask for dispatches. Here, messmate. Now, Frank? Give us your grappling iron. Mayhap you don't know me. No? Well, that's hard to a sailor come to his native place. We've ploughed many an acre together on Farmer Sparrow's ground. What? Is that William? William that married Susan Avast there. I've been three years at sea. I leap upon the beach. My shipmates find hands to grasp and lips to press. But I find not Susan. Believe me, Avast there. If you must hoist the black flag... Gently. Is she yet in commission? Does she live? She does. Thank heaven. <gasps> oh, yeah. Why, there's galley fire lighted up in me heart. There's not an R in her name. What do you mean? Mean? Great canister. She's not run. Not shown false colours. No, no. Susan is well, is constant. But it's been made to feel that poverty... He's too often punished for crime. What? Short of ammunition to keep off the land sharks? But her uncle? Ah, he's treated her most unkindly. I see it. I'll overhaul him. I'll bring him on his beam ends. Heave ahead, me shipmate. Now for me, dear Susan, and no carter for her uncle. Oh, where's William? He should be here. William, William, where are you? Ta! In faith, that's the prettiest little vessel I ever saw on a long station. Ta! I threw out a signal to her, but she wouldn't answer. Hmm. Here comes the fellow that passed me whilst I was talking to her. Here, shipmate, there's a dollar for you. Oh, truly, sir. I will be at be messmates. You might have made it ten shillings. Yeah, you passed me a few minutes since when I was in company with the petticoat. What's her name? Who is she? We simply call her Susan. Black-eyed Susan. She's the wife of a sailor. Ah, what fond of the blue jackets. Yes, yeah, so fond of the jacket that she never looked at your long coat. <laughs> Good day, Captain. Da, the wife of a sailor, wife of a common seaman. Why, she's fit for an admiral. I know it's wrong, but I will see her again. And come what may, I must and will have her.
guy rushes to poor Susan's birth, and she's not a born, out on liberty, but not come to the beach. Huh? That's she. Ha! And with two strange recrafting convoy. I'll tack a bit. Oh. What? Hanging out signals of distress. <gasps> oh, oh, these are heavy tidings indeed. Don't take on so pretty, Susan. If William is dead, there are husbands enough for so pretty a face as yours. Dead? May I never splice the main brace if that swab don't want to get into my hammock? But is there no hope? Oh, none. I tell you, Susan, this honest fellow here was William's messmate. He saw him go down. Poor fellow. He's William's friend, and the story hurts him, so I'll tell it to you. You see, the ship had got upon the rocks. William and twelve other brave fellows were in the water. This ship made air threw out a rope. But it was too late. William sank and was never seen more. His shipmate turned round and saw, Damnation! William! What? Hang out full signals to the petticoat? May you both have the yellow flag over you and go up in the smoke of the forecastle chaser. William, William, for heaven's sake, just one little bout, Susan, to see how I'll make small biscuit of him. You won't fight? Then take that to the paymaster and ask for the change. Ah! Oh! Ah! There is one for old Davy. Ah! Ah! Smugglers, surrender, or you have not a moment's life. Smugglers. I thought they were not men of war's men. True Blue never piloted a woman on the quicksand. We dogged you here, that you gave us a slip last night. Come, my lads, as you have cheated the king long enough, you shall now serve him. The fleet wants hands, and you shall aboard. Ah, you. Ah, so get Oh, Susan, may I be lashed here until death gives the last whistle. Oh, William, I thought we should never meet again. Not meet? Why, we shall never part again. The captain has promised to write to the Admiralty for my discharge. I saved his life in the Basque Row. Come along, Sue. First to Dame Hatley's, and then we'll pitch care overboard, call for the fiddles, start the rum cast, tipple the grog, and pipe all hands to the mischief. Oh, apprentice to a coasting ship, a weathered many a gale. No oh, bless your heart, I never know no fear. To treat my pretty Sue and shore to foreign climes I sail. When I learn to box the compass, tipple grog, can't read fence there, and sing right all foldy roldy roll. Right all foldy roldy yo. Oh. Come on, me boy, pipe up, pipe up. A song. The song, that's what we want. All right, all right, here it goes. All in the downs, their fleet was mourned. The stream is waving in their wind. 
When black-eyed Susan came aboard, oh, where shall I my true love find? Tell me, ye jovial sailors, tell me true. If my sweet William, if my sweet William sails among your crew. Who have we here? Man the Yasby boys, here comes the captain. And sorry, my fine fellows, to interrupt your festivities, but you must on board tonight. Tonight, Your Honor? Yes, to, to set sail tomorrow. Set sail tomorrow? Why, the Lords of the Admiralty will break the women's hearts, Your Honor. Where's William? He's with Susan, Your Honor. Pretty black-eyed Susan, as she's called. With black-eyed Susan? How's that? How, Your Honor? Why, they are spliced together for life. Married? Why, I never knew of this. No? <laughs> Why, Your Honor, I thought it was well known as the Union Jack. They were spliced before we went upon the last station. Don't know it, Your Honor? <laughs> Many a time has the middle watch sung of the parting of William and Susan. Ta <sighs> Married? I had rather forfeited all chance of being an admiral. Mm. Well, my lads, uh, you hear my advice, so make the most of your time. <laughs> for tomorrow, you may be sailing for the blue waters again. Here are my shipmates, Susan. Why, look. An honest nap brain, Susan has told me all about ya. Gear, give, give us a grapple. A come the arties. We are not by the galley fire. Ah, ha, ha, that's right, William. Let's have a dance. Hey! <laughs> should you say now nah, if you were to see Blue Peter flat at the floor? Blue Peter? Belay there. We shan't touch cable these six weeks. The captain blows from another point. Ha! And here's Quid the Bosun with the crew of an admiral's barge after him. Now, lads. Who lads on board? On board, Mr. Quid? Why, you're not in earnest. Indeed, I am. 
There's the lieutenant waiting on the beach for all the liberty men. The lieutenant? Oh, William, must you leave me so early? Why, duty and old Susan must be obeyed. But cruise around here a little. Well, I'll go down to the lieutenant and ask leave till tomorrow. The... <laughs> Confound that fellow's wine, or mischief on that little rogue's black eyes, <laughs> for one or the other has made sad havoc here. Ah, oh, the strange officer that accosted me. Well, <laughs> now for the boat. Ha! May I never see salt water again, if this not be the very wench. Here, my dear, my love, come here. Intoxicated too, I'll avoid him. Stop, stop, stop. Why, what are you fluttering about? Don't you know I found out a secret? <laughs> I'm your husband's captain. I'm glad of it, sir. Are you, sir? <laughs> come, that sounds well for I think you will give my husband leave of absence. Or if that is impossible, allow me to go on board his ship. Go on board? Ha <laughs> ha, that you shall. <laughs> you shall go in the captain's gig. You shall live in the captain's cabin, sir. Would it not be a shame for such a beanful, black-eyed, tender little angel as yourself to visit between decks? Come, think of it. As for William, he's a fine fellow, certainly, but you can forget him. Sir, let me go, forget him, and live for me. By heavens, I love ya, and I must have ya. If you're a gentleman, if, if you're a sailor, you will not insult a defenseless woman. Come, my dear. I have visited too many seaports not to understand all this. I know I may be wrong, but passion hurries me. The wine fires me. Your eyes dart lightning into me, and you shall be... Let me go! William! William! You crazy, useless monster! William! William! Susan! And attacked by the buccaneers! Why, you won't die! Oh, I deserve my fate! <laughs> William, do you know what you've done? You've struck the captain. Black-Eyed Susan, Act 3. Prisoner, you are charged with an attempt to slay Robert Crosstree, captain of His Majesty's Navy and your superior officer. Answer, are you guilty or not guilty? I want your honor to steer well between the questions. I am not guilty of an attempt to kill the captain, but if it be guilt to strike in defense of a sailor's own sheet anchor, his wife, why? I say guilty, your honor. You plead guilty? Let me, as one of your judges, advise you to reconsider the plea. At least take the chances which a hearing of your case may allow. I leave that chance to your own hearts, your honours. Does no one of your shipmates attend to speak your character? Have you no one? No one, your honour? I didn't think to ask him. But let the word be passed 
And may I never go aloft, if from the boatswain to the black cook there's one that could spin a yarn to condemn me. Pass the word forward for witnesses. <laughs> What are you? Boatswain, Your Honor. What know you of the prisoner? No, Your Honor, the trimmest sailor has ever handled rope. The first on his watch, the last to lay the deck. But uh, what know you of his moral character? His moral character, Your Honor? Why, he plays upon the fiddle like an angel. Uh, are there any other witnesses? What do you know of the prisoner? Nothing but good, Your Honor. He was never known to disobey command? Never but once, Your Honor. And that was when I was upon the blacklist. He gave me half his grog. What else do you know? Why, this I know, Your Honor. If William goes aloft, there is certain promotion for him. Have you nothing else to show? Did he never do any great benevolent action? Yes, he twice saved the captain's life. Uh, are there any more witnesses? Your Honours, I feel as if I was in irons or seized to the grating to stand here and listen like the landlord's daughter of the Nelson to nothing but yarns about service and character. Gentlemen, are your opinions still unchanged? Hmm. Prisoner, what have you to say in arrest of judgment? Now is your time to speak. I had been three years at sea, Your Honours, and had never looked upon or heard from my wife as sweet a little craft that was ever launched. I had come ashore and was lively as a petrel in a storm. I found Susan, that's my wife, Your Honours. I heard Susan giving signals of distress. I out with me cutlass, made all sail, and came up to my craft and found her battling with a pirate. I never looked at his figure, it never stopped. Would any of your honours? Long live you and your wives, say I. You would have done as I did. And what did I? Why, I cut him down like old junk. Yeah, had he been the first lord of the admiralty, I'd have done it. Prisoner, be keenly feeble for your situation. Yet you as a good sailor must know that the course of justice cannot be evaded. Have you anything further to advance? Oh, well, my cable is run out. I'm brought to. Prisoner, your case falls under the 22nd article of war. If any man in or belonging to His Majesty's fleet shall draw or offer to draw, or lift up his hand against a superior officer, he shall suffer death. The sentence of this court is that you be hanged at the foreyard arm of this His Majesty's ship at the hour of ten o'clock. Heaven pardon your sins and have mercy on your soul. This court is now dissolved.
It's a brave fellow, William. And fear not death. Death? <laughs> no, since I first trod the king's oak, he has been about me. I have slipped near him, watched near him. He has looked upon my face. <sighs> Your honour's hand. Blue Peter's flying, the vessel of life has her anchor a trip. I must soon get under way for the ocean of eternity. Your honour will have to march me to the launching place. And now, William, have you any request to make? None, Your Honour. Susan and some friends will shortly be on board. Oh, all I want is that I may have strength to see my wife, my poor, young, broken-hearted wife, for the last time. And then die like a seaman and a man. All in the downs, the fleet was more. The stream is waving in the wind. When black eyed, oh, my heart is splitting. Susan, oh, William, William, and have I watched, prayed for your return? And all for this? Aye, Susan, it's hard. But that's all over. To grieve is useless. You remain behind me. There's some comfort. I died in a good cause. I died in defence of the virtue of a wife. Her tears will fall like spring rain on the grass that covers me. Oh, talk not so, your grave. I feel as the place where my heart must throw down its heavy load of life. Come, Susan, shake off your tears. Think, Susan, that, that I'm going on a long foreign station. Think so. Now, what would you ask? Have you nothing, nothing to say? Nothing? Oh, all oh, one at home, open and trembling for this meeting. Thoughts crowded on me, and I felt as I could have talked to you for days, stopping for want of power, not word. But now the terrible time has come. Now I'm almost tongue-tied. My, my heart swells to my throat. I can but look and weep. Her, the gun. Oh, William, husband. Is it so near? You, you speak not. You tremble. Susan, be calm. If you love your husband, do not send him on the deck, a white-faced coward. Be still, my poor girl. I have something to say. Until you are calm, I, I will not utter it. Susan, you know the old aspen that grows near to the church porch? You and I, when children, almost before we could speak plainly, have sat and watched and wondered at its shaken leaves. When I'm dead, Susan, let me be laid under that tree. Let me be... What crime is that? A sheep mate overboard? No, William. But as the gun was fired, a body rose up just at the portal. They have taken it aboard. It is... It is the body of Susan's uncle. A packet directed to the captain was taken from it. What? Susan's uncle? Villain! May the greatest... Oh, no, no. I shall soon be like him. Why should the dying triumph over the dead?
Hold, hold, hold there. Captain Crosstrail, retire, sir, retire. Never, never. If their prisoner be executed, he is a murdered man. I am known of the culprit. Twas I who would have dishonored him. This cannot plead here. He struck a superior officer. No, no, no. He saved my life. I had written for his discharge. Villainy suppressed the document. Tis here, dated back. When William struck me, he was not the king's sailor. I was not his officer. Hmm. Then he is free. <laughs> Mr. Jonathan Blewett's original music for the 1829 production was played by Mr. Andrew Polder on the piano. The Sailor's Hornpipe was played by the Deal Hoodners. And the Sounds of the Sea were real sounds of Deal Beach, as were all the settings in the play based on Deal scenery. <laughs> 